Okay, so today we discuss um, an obstetric emergency um, which is cord prolapse. So cord prolapse is quite common um, and I think when we are in labor ward we are all going to see uh, this uh, condition. So we'll start by defining cord prolapse. What is cord prolapse? So cord prolapse is descent of the cord below um, the presenting part. So when the cord presents below the presenting part, we call that an overt uh, cord prolapse. And sometimes the cord is just side by side with the presenting um, part, but not below um, the presenting part. That's also a cord prolapse, but it's an overt it's an, a knockout uh, cord prolapse, so to say. So this is as opposed to what is called um, cord presentation. In cord presentation, the cord is also below uh, the presenting part, or is it the cord has presented below the presenting part, or the cord is side by side with the presenting part, but in this case, the membranes are intact. So when the membranes are intact, we call that a cord presentation. So what are the risk factors for, um, for cord prolapse? So there are condition-related risk factors and there are procedure-related risk factors. So we'll start with condition-related uh, risk factors. So we have things like um, malpresentations, uh, you know, breach presentation. We have abnormal lies, um, like transverse lie. We have um, unstable lie. We have conditions where the fetus is an is abnormal, like you have um, um, hydrocephalus. Uh, we have uh, twin pregnancies. Um, we have um, conditions like twin pregnancy. We have situations where um, uh, the fetal head or the presenting part is not engaged and it's just floating for whatever reason. Um, conditions like um, polyhydramnios, all these conditions can uh, uh, predispose to um, uh, cord prolapse. We have procedures that predispose to cord prolapse. Uh, one of them is artificial rupture of membranes. So if you're rupturing membranes for induction of labor or for augmentation of labor, uh, when the presenting part is quite high, all this can predispose to cord prolapse. Sometimes when you're trying to do fetal manipulation in external cephalic vision, um, internal cephalic vision, all these uh, things can um, uh, predispose to, to cord prolapse. So what is the problem when it comes to cord prolapse? What, why is it uh, an obstetric emergency? So when the cord prolapses, it's below the presenting part. So the presenting part can compress on the cord, um, reduce oxygen supply to the baby, cause hypoxia, cause acidosis, and eventual uh, fetal death. So that is the problem um, that is there with cord prolapse. But the bigger problem is that the cord is out of its natural habitat, so to say, and it's um, being exposed uh, to uh, the weather elements. So uh, the cord, the heat outside the um, amniotic sac can cause uh, those blood vessels to go into vasospasms and in the same way, reduce oxygen supply to the baby, cause hypoxia, cause acidosis, and eventual fetal death. The other thing that is usually a problem with cord prolapse, and this is mentioned only to be discouraged, is that uh, people get the temptation to handle the cord. Uh, so handling the cord also causes the cord to go into vasospasms, and that can cause um, hypoxia to the fetus, and also can eventually end up uh, with fetal death. So the first rule that happens um, that should, we should all know when we have a cord prolapse is to avoid handling the cord and necessarily for any reason. So avoid handling the cord. Of course, you call for help because there are so many things that um, need to be done. You need to get a full blood count uh, for that mother because she might go to theater. You need to do um blood grouping you need to do as uh, as uh, yeah a group and serve uh, you need to make the sure that the um, resuscitator is prepared you need to make sure that you inform theater you inform an anesthesiologist you inform your surgeon who's in theater that uh, there's a case of cord prolapse that has happened on the ward um 
The other thing that needs to quickly be done is make an assessment on that woman. Um, we make sure the fetal heart is still there. We do a vaginal exam. We make sure that the fetal umbilical cord is still uh, pulsating. We assess that she's fully dilated or not. We assess the station. Is it plus one or at least below zero? Because that makes us want to attempt um, vacuum delivery. Because you know in our setup, um, when we say cesarean section, and this is a category one cesarean section, it needs to be done within 30 minutes of decision. But you know in our setup, it takes us an hour, it takes us one and a half hours, it takes us two hours to do an emergency cesarean section. So if the woman is fully dilated, the station is below zero. Um, we can quickly do a vacuum delivery and and save um, uh, the life uh, of the of the baby in this case. If the the prerequisites of um, doing a vacuum are not uh, fulfilled, then we need to make sure this woman uh, goes for cesarean section. So as we are preparing for cesarean section, we make sure that the, she's in niches position. We can elevate the presenting part to reduce compression on the cord and put uh, some normal saline in the blood. I put like normal saline in the blood, about 500 mils, so that once we push the presenting part um, up, it doesn't uh, come back. So that's one thing that can be done. We've already said we need to avoid handling the cord unnecessarily. And we need to make sure that all these procedures of niches, trying to push the head above um, to reduce compression, don't uh, delay uh, us doing um, a cesarean section. So we've made sure that she, the blood is already gone for full blood count, for group and serve. The resuscitators are already prepared. The surgeons are already ready. Uh, the anesthesiologist is already ready. The theater nurse is already ready. We quickly rush this woman to theater who's in Nietzsche's position. Her head is down, her bums are up. Um, we quickly move this patient to theater. So when we reach theater, everyone knows already that there's a cord prolapse. Um, we quickly put this woman on the theater table. We make sure we have an experienced anesthetist who quickly put this patient uh, under or uh, do that spinal anesthesia quickly. We have an experienced um, surgeon who will not be fidgeting around trying to extract the baby. So we make sure that things are done quickly. Within one to two minutes, uh, the patient is on the table, the baby um, is already out. Of course, before we do the procedure, we need to just make sure the cord is pulsating. Uh, the fetus is still alive and then we start the, um, the procedure so we extract the baby and we resuscitate the baby if before the procedure we find that the um, cord is not pulsating of course we empathetically um, explain the condition to the mother what has happened that a baby is no more um, uh, her baby is not alive anymore and therefore she will need to go back to the labor ward where a normal delivery um, is going to take place because there's no um, reason uh, for the cesarean section to be done if the baby is already dead. So uh, that is uh, called prolapse. It's an obstetric emergency. We need to move very quickly um, to save that baby. And um, it's an unfortunate event when it happens. Um, but if we move quickly, we have a chance to save the baby and we'll see the mother appreciating the efforts uh, to get uh, her babies saved and um, I hope we can all see this um, uh, situation and I think that we'll see it at one point or the other. So thank you very much for listening and um, we'll see you on the next one.